Fuck? Fuck! Fuck! Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon. For the first time in TGS history, I'm having to walk Broncos fans off the ledge after week one, Perna. If I can borrow from Aaron Rodgers, X, A, N, A, X, Xanax. Take a fucking Xanax or any benzodiazepine and turn into a zombie for the rest of the week. Okay, Broncos fans? And we should have known this was going to be bad. After seeing the Broncos in all white on the sidelines, dressed like a bunch of Mark Davises, I knew without question the Raiders were going to take away their innocence. You're not supposed to wear all white after Labor Day or a pirate will steal your virginity. That's the first verse in the Bible and Vic Fangio ignored it. The Raiders defeat the Broncos on Monday Night Football and John Gruden finds peace after Antonio Brown abandoned him. This is the recap of that tragic affair. Ask a sports. Please, if you're new, subscribe to this YouTube channel. I covered the entire NFL almost every day. Today's episode, though, is sponsored by my friends from Manscaped. And today I'm excited to announce I'm gonna do a Manscaped giveaway. All you have to do to win the Lawn Mower 2.0, the safest piece of equipment to shave your balls, the pube mat to catch your dirty little pubes, a Manscaped shirt, and a Manscaped travel, travel bag that may have some goodies inside of it. All you have to do to win these great Manscaped products is like this video or share this video and I will select a person at random and mail it to you. I have extras, so I'm gonna send it to you. Now, if you wanna order your own Manscaped products, please do so with my link in the description or with the promo code GOODSPORTS and you will save on your first order. Manscaped is the number one spot for all of your male body maintenance needs from their pube trimmers that will not nick or cut your balls to their shampoos and soaps, which honestly are now my favorite things to wash my body with. They smell so good. Please check out manscaped.com. Again, I will do this giveaway because I love their products. Manscaped. It was not surprising that the Raiders didn't start this game with a little bit of class, with just 10 players on offense, leaving one spot vacant for one play to honor the tragic loss of their beloved Antonio Brown. Fuck AB! Fuck AB! That did not surprise me. What did surprise me was that the Raiders marched down the field on the opening drive only to throw the luckiest best TD pass I have ever seen Derek Carr throw. This pass should have been blocked or tipped twice before finally squeezing through a tight window into Tyrell Williams' dumb hands. One question I had heading into this game was, could Joe Flacco prove he's a better running back than Lamar Jackson and finish the game with seven rushing yards? No, no, he could not. And watching him try to push the pile on the goal line made me realize that being tall does not also make you strong. Flacco finished with one rushing yard on the day, which gave Denver exactly 100 for the evening. Also made possible by the first play going for negative five yards. Flacco gave us a mixed bag performance. And even though the end result was the same, a Broncos loss, he felt different than the Keenums and Simeons before him. Ah, oh, I do miss Trevor Simeon. Not on the field, but as a member of the Broncos. This image of Simeon proves he's a timeless Trevor treasure. How old is Trevor Simeon here? 38? 23? Dating your mom in the 80s? You don't know. If he wasn't in a new Jets uni, you wouldn't have a clue as to what decade this photo was taken. Also, a Nike swoosh right next to the dick? Just do it? Seems a bit inappropriate for kids watching NFL. Now, I am very confident in Joe Flacco's ability to throw the ball deep and in the middle of the field. Cortland Sutton looked like the Broncos' best offensive weapon, and that is encouraging. Flacco appeared to struggle with some uh, short touch passes, though. Basically, the only thing we've seen work here in Denver since 2014. Like when he threw the ball behind Deshaun Hamilton, which should have been an easy first down and somehow resulted in a loss. 
rewinding back to the Broncos very first play. Imagine how much praise Rich Scangarella would be getting if that first play went for a big gain. How was he supposed to know that the Raiders defense would do their fucking job? Something they literally haven't done since this picture was taken of Trevor Simeon. And I don't blame Skangy for this play not working. Rewatching the play, it looks like the tight end or the tackle blew their assignment and just forgot to block Josh Morrow on the play. Now before the game even started, Raiders fans were rocking fuck AB shirts and had pre-game chants to match. Fuck AB! Fuck AB! Then the Raiders fans brought the fuck AB chants onto primetime live television. Yep, and that's the first time Raiders Nation made me proud. My respect, though, lasted about six seconds. Then the TV cut away to this terrifying progressive costume of a lesbian Raiders fan that gave me nightmares. I do credit the Monday Night Football crew for not disappointing me in this game. Down to the field, here's Diana Rossini. things to say there. Now besides Isaac Yadam getting burned like feet in a cryo chamber for the entirety of the first half, it felt like the Broncos defense was vanilla. Monday night was the first game this vaunted Denver defense didn't sack a quarterback. Von Miller and Bradley Chubb had no sacks and weren't even really close. Per Nikki Jabala, the last no sack game for the Broncos was week 15 of 2014 and they only generated pressure on 15.4% of dropbacks as opposed to 28% last season. Von Miller said, my job is to sack the quarterback and I didn't get to him once. Not only that, but after the Raiders embarrassingly had back-to-back -back false starts from their own five yard line, Denver let them drive 98 yards down the field for their second touchdown of the game. Denver left a ton of points on the field as well. They were ready to score until a Ronald Leary hold moved them back. Then a sack fumble that Denver recovered made a field goal out of the question. Little mistakes that cost the Broncos big was the story of this game. That sack fumble could have been prevented by Royce Freeman, I think. Freeman should have seen his tackle struggling and chipped Vincent Mayoa before dropping into the flat here. Doesn't matter if that is his job, you have to see those things the way I see them after watching the game with the TV replays and then watching it again the next day. It's so clear. Then the Broncos got pushed out of field goal range again, and this time by a Noah Fant hold that turned a 54 yard field goal attempt into a 64 yarder that missed by a couple feet to end the first half. If not for those two penalties, the Broncos have at least six more points on the scoreboard. And that adds up to 10 when you factor in the drop touchdown pass by Deshaun Hamilton that resulted in just three. That drop TD pass, that was a turning point in the game, I think. The Broncos had third and goal, and Joe Flacco rifled the pass to Hamilton, who let the ball go through him like Andrew Burr fired it. Maybe, maybe though Hamilton thought Cortland Sutton would bail him out, like Hamilton did for Sutton earlier. Sutton may be the Broncos' best receiver, but he is a terrible friend. The Broncos had to kick a field goal to make it 14 to six instead of 14 to 10, which took some serious air out of their sails. Credit Hamilton for staying at his locker to answer questions after the game. I think that takes bravery. I would have put on a fuck AB shirt and slid out the back door and let that lesbian raider have her way with me. Just like Christmas Eve last year, Denver kicks the ball to Dwayne Harris and Dwayne Harris makes them pay. If the Raiders can find a way to make sure Deontay Spencer doesn't get a single return, the Broncos should too. Here's a plausible reason outside of performance failure, the Broncos lost the game, okay? They have a new coaching staff, like almost all the coaches are new. There's a new quarterback, a lot of new players. And if I am brutally honest, Brandon McManus's mustache is not thick enough to be trying 64 yard field goals in the black hole. You need to add at least a quarter inch to that magnetic female reproductive area attractor before you harness the full power of being a man who can do anything like Tom Selleck in a brothel. By the way, who the hell does Tahir Whitehead think he is? Talking shit to Denver's best offensive weapon? 
What kind of coward gets in a kicker's face after he barely misses a 64 yarder at sea level in the dirt? You literally did nothing to stop that kick to here, and you're wagging your finger in that mustache's face? Do you have a death wish? If McManus's leg wasn't so tired from trying to kick a 64 yard field goal, he probably would have kicked Whitehead's little purple head while counting backwards for no fucking reason until he stopped at zero and Whitehead was dead. 40, 37, 34, 31, 28. Bryce Callahan couldn't go for the Broncos and it definitely turned out to be an issue. The Raiders kept going after Isaac Yadam and Denver had no answer. He matched up early against Darren Waller who kept boxing him out on catches, and then Yadam got scorched on a deep ball to Tyrell Williams, maybe more than once, who had six catches and 105 yards in his first game as a Raider. Yadam wasn't good, but he's not meant to be the number two corner, and he didn't get a ton of help in matchups. So we shall see how he develops. If Paul Gunther wasn't already here, Burfitt probably is not here from Cincinnati. Oh God, he's the smartest player any of these guys have ever played around. Well, that speaks for itself as far as I'm concerned. Me trying to make this statement more humorous would be like that wacky TV weatherman giving Bill Burr stand-up tips. Now a major concern is right tackle Jawan James went down early in this game holding his right knee, which is the universal sign for oh fuck. He ended up limping off the field while Elijah Wilkinson came in to play right tackle. And of course Wilkinson quickly gave up that sack to Flacco. Uh, this is a Raiders team that had 13 sacks all of last season, and the Broncos gave up three last night. I now present Bushwatch 2019, sponsored by Manscaped. This is where I compare Devin Bush to Noah Fant. Noah Fant's debut was a bathroom vase of potpourri. Some pleasant smells trying to mask the scent of a shit just taken. Two receptions for 29 yards, but also two big penalties and a five yard loss to start the game that wasn't his fault. Devin Bush, well, the, the Steelers, ugh. Rich Scangarella ran a trick play in the red zone that also didn't work because of the lack of execution and blocking. This is not a terrible play call. It's a pretty safe play actually that was just poorly executed up front. The only head coach with a new team to get a win week one was the guy who had Aaron Rodgers. And Aaron Rodgers didn't even play good because he forgot to take his Xanax. Sean McVay won his first game as a head coach, but that was against a terrible Andrew Luckless Colts team. He lost week two to Washington. Matt Nagy lost his first game coaching the Bears last year to the Packers. Vance Joseph won his first game in Denver and Josh McDaniels won his first six. My point. None of it fucking matters week one, okay? There are legitimate things to be concerned about, yes, but a few of them are very fixable. The two things I am actually worried about are the offensive line and the defensive line. Both units were manhandled by the Raiders. That concerns me from a rushing perspective on the offense, and outside the missing pass rush, the defensive line was not disrupting the pocket, or winning their battles. Josh Jacobs became the first Raider since 1972 to score multiple touchdowns in his debut. Mistakes can be fixed. Being more physical, now that's a gray area. So this isn't the end of the season. It's week one on the road in the place the Broncos haven't won since 2014. It's not time to fire Vic Fangio. It's not time to cut Isaac Yadam. It's not time to bench Joe Flacco. And it sure as fuck isn't time to start tanking. So stop acting like a bunch of shitty fans on Twitter that can't take a loss. Get over it, move on to next week, because there's, that's really the only option we have. <laughs> what I am going to hope for is for the first time since 2015, the Broncos actually start playing good football at the end of the season instead of four great weeks in September, followed by soul-crushing loss after soul-crushing loss until all hope of a postseason birth is annihilated by George Kittle. The bad news, Denver has to play the Bears on a short week while Chicago gets 10 days of rest and has a defense that looks legit elite. Like the Broncos defense should have looked. Fuck! Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, at Brandon Perna. If you wanna talk football shit or, let's try to be positive, okay? Let's say some positive things to me on Twitter. It would really help me, you know, feel better about this week moving forward and the Bears.